Well, good evening, folks. Welcome back to the farm. Such a lovely evening. We're gonna go for a toboggan ride. But uh, Charlotte, Charlotte just wants to pull the toboggan around the field. So we're actually out in the bull pasture right now. Like I said, it's just gorgeous out there. I think it's about six or seven degrees right now. Sun's shining. So we might as well get out and enjoy it while we can. Are you having the time of your life in there? Say hi, Ranger. Puppy. Hey there, buddy. How are you? So we were just over there where the bulls are right now, checking out the compost pile. So this is all the leftover sheep manure and bedding from last year that composted just absolutely beautifully and stayed hot for the majority of the winter. Actually, it was just in the last six weeks, I think, when we had a real dip down to minus 50 there, kind of in February. And now it's now it's actually frozen and kind of inactive, but the compost is in there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. You never know it now, but because everything's covered in snow, but this is the mouse miracle garden. This is our experimental garden. Last year, we actually moved that blue shed from right here, and it was rock hard clay. And we thought, well, if anything's, you know, stands a chance of growing, <laughs> let's go worst case scenario. And this was worst case scenario. And yes, we were successfully able to grow potatoes, sunflowers. We even had a few daffodils in there. So it was just kind of like, get your excuses out of the way and just, just plant stuff. So this year, we're gonna go to the a polar extreme of that and this is going to be our no dig uh, fiber mulch garden so when all this white stuff disappears i'm going to hoe up some rows you know make some uh, shapes and beds and then i'm going to lay down we have a lot of excess wool here on the farm we're actually going to be shearing in a few weeks i'm sure when the shear becomes available and we're going to lay a blanket of wool down in between the rows and then add a heavy layer of straw and manure from our bulls and then add all that compost that we just saw on top of the beds are we swinging charlotte yeah, yeah. is this so much fun yeah. yeah well anyways later this spring i can't wait to start applying some permaculture principles to the mouse miracle garden we called it the mouse miracle garden because well when i moved the shed there was the hundreds of mice that come flying out of there so that's that's the thing it was lots of mice and it was a miracle because we got something to grow in there but yes permaculture principles we're actually gonna you know focus on using some natural techniques use some observation try and work with nature and oftentimes i hear you know everybody just uh, there's just weeds everywhere and they say oh that's permaculture you know that's just oh you just gotta listen to the soil you gotta listen to what the weeds are telling you yeah the weeds are telling you to get out in your garden but <laughs> that's a story for another day um yeah so the sheep wool I, I read the other day about some sheep wool pellets so they're mixing sheep wool with cattle manure and compressing it into a pellet and and working it in as, as, as a soil amendment so the sheep wool contains quite a bit of nitrogen that can be released slowly over time and also works as a slug repellent so i thought well that's really interesting so that's why i'm going to lay it down as a base layer of mulch in between the rows and then, and then lay some straw mulch on top of that just to weight it down so it doesn't, you know, we get a lot of wind here, right? We don't want this thing to tumble across the yard and then it's gone, right? And then adding our compost that we're building right now out in the, in the field, and we might even throw a couple layers of the, uh, the compost we're building in behind the, the chicken house. And, you know, this is gonna be Charlotte's garden. Like, that's why I'm so intent on this succeeding, is I wanna get this to a complete place of abundance so that when she gets, you know, four or five years old she can come out here and it's just going to be you know jack and the beanstalk pretty much just you know get things growing 40 feet high sunflower well not 40 feet high sunflowers but there's no reason why you couldn't get 12 foot high sunflowers over here if you know the, the soil conditions were correct all right so here we are back in the shop actually in the kitchen so this is we got this little island set up here so originally the island was over here and we put a new tabletop on it and underneath the island, we put some casters so we can move this thing around. It's actually pretty sweet, but I just wheeled it around here beside the sink and we're gonna wash all our eggs, 
It's going to become our egg washing station. We're getting a little bit overwhelmed in the house because, you know, we're getting three to three and a half dozen eggs every single day. So we set up, we got this perfect utility sink here and I've got some plastic. These are punnets from grapes actually. And I thought, well, instead of just letting these go to the garbage, it'd be kind of cool to just, you know, repurpose them. I thought, well, you know, we could carry stuff in them. But then I realized that if they're set upside down like this, when we wash the eggs, the eggs can sit on top. That makes for a perfect egg drying station before we put them in the cartons. But as you know, I have a bit of a, well, I wouldn't call it a love-hate relationship with the grocery store. It's more hate than love. But uh, so this is some grapes. Where do these grapes come all the way? So these gra the grapes are packed in plastic, and then they're put it again in this heavy-duty plastic um, crate. They come all the way from Chile in all of this plastic and it says right on the right on this case treated with sulfur dioxide for fungicide use now i don't know if you know what sulfur dioxide is but it is a very very toxic gas so not something i really want to touch my food or the food that you know our family eats absolutely not so yeah gonna put these to a more natural use now to, uh, to dry off our free range eggs. Okay, so I'm all done washing eggs. They're all put away, they're in the fridge. Fantastic, it's time for today's life lesson. If you're looking behind me, you're probably thinking today's life lesson is you can never have enough bug spray, which is true in and of itself, but no, that's not today's life lesson. Today's life lesson is a little bit personal. So and I'm not really one for being super, you know, super personal, but I mean, we have a YouTube channel, so you guys see what happens here anyways. It doesn't really matter. Um, and there's no sense in BS, BS in anybody. So what's, what's going on here? So recently found out that I was close contact of somebody that was COVID positive. So that means I'm locked down for 14 days. So, well, I'm guess I'm going to spend some time with the chickens. I'm okay with that. Carmen found out recently that she's got some hearing loss due to occupational exposure. So the life lesson in all this is if you want to find out the quality of the people you work with or work for, and just tell them that you become sick or injured as a result of, you know, something that happened at work. And you will find out really, really quick the quality of people that you work with. So anyways, big picture, what does this really mean to us? Well, not a whole bunch. Essentially, Carmen can't hear me complain about having the man flu. So <laughs> I'm sure that works out all right for everybody. Anyways, on that note, I'm, yeah, I'm done. Chores are all done. I'm going to head in. I'm going to have a cup of tea. So I'll let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening and we'll see you tomorrow.